Well, now, in an exclusive parting interview, former Armed Forces Minister James Heapy has warned that Special Forces soldiers could end up being killed on the battlefield if they hesitate due to fear of prosecution. He's also called on the Prime Minister to increase defence spending to 2.5% of GDP and committing to spend 3% in 2030. We'll bring you some of his exclusive conversation with The Times' defence editor, Larissa Brown, now. She began with the Afghan Special Forces inquiry, where Veterans Minister Johnny Mercer has been requested to name whistleblowers who told him about allegations of unlawful killings of Afghan civilians between 2010 and 2013. She asked James Heapy, who served in Afghanistan in 2009, if he thought Mercer should hand those names over to the inquiry. Yes. Yeah, I Why? think he should. Because I understand all of the arguments about the confidentiality of whistleblowers and whatever else, but fundamentally... This inquiry has effectively the powers of a court. And I think if, if allegations are going to be made about people that cross the criminal threshold, then, then you, you kind of have to, you have to have the evidence presented. You, you, can't, you can't find people guilty of this, this, this sort of malpractice, this, this horrend, these horrendous allegations which would almost certainly lead to criminal proceedings as a consequence. Mm -hmm. You can't do that on second-hand hearsay. The, invest the inquiry needs to hear from those people. Mm. And I think that the way that you reassure the whistleblower, plural, whistleblowers, is through the way that you design the inquiry and the, the inquiry and the mechanisms you have for the taking of evidence in private. Mm -hmm which Lord Haddon Cave, as far as I know, has been very clear on his capacity to do that. Mm -hmm. But do you know what? I, I, I also do understand where Johnny's coming from. And if he was told something, and the people who told it to him have asked that they do not be, um, that, they, that they, they don't want to be meant, they don't want to be, be identified. Yeah. Um, I understand why he feels torn, um, but I think fundamentally he has reflected those secondhand concerns in a formal, in a formal witness statement. Yeah. And because of because of the things that those people who made those disclosures to Johnny, the things that they've said, particularly the guy who told Johnny he'd been asked to carry a drop weapon. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the inquiry needs to speak to that person. She also asked him for his thoughts on whether inquiries like this would have a negative effect on Special Forces soldiers on the battlefield today. Our licence to operate comes from holding ourselves to the highest standard. And, of course, we should be investigated when, when the allegation is that we've fallen short. Mm -hmm. But we should also be clear that the consequence of these investigations these inquiries is everything in your operational your pre-deployment training and your you know your foundational training is all about trusting your instincts and those instincts are what keeps you alive that 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 heightened sense of awareness because it's just something that doesn't quite feel right and then having the confidence to shoot um quicker than they shoot you and there is just this danger that but if people think that the rules of engagement can retrospectively be deconstructed and you'd be held to account for every millisecond of the process before you applied lethal force in a way that when you're acting instinctively and in an environment that complex you, you've got to be so focused on the mission that you, you I, I don't it's not realistic to think you can then give an, give an account in a, in, in a court about that firefight there is this danger this real danger that the, the very foundational rule of engagement that you can use lethal force in defense of your life or life of another and that that comes down to an honestly held view but the real danger is that that those who are serving now start to worry about that possibility 20 years hence mm -hmm. and it does indeed cost them 0.25 of a second in their trigger reaction time and that might be the difference between the other guy shooting first it is a, a really far-reaching interview and it's well worth reading on the Times website and app now, actually. Um, Larissa ended by asking the former Armed Forces Minister about the impact of being in government on his marriage. 
I don't think that there's a sort of direct thing that because I was an MP, because I was a minister, my marriage broke down. I mean, the circumstances of that were um, there's, there's plenty. There's plenty to that. That's kind of my business. That, but, but definitely, definitely, um, the pressure of the job, being away a lot. Um, means that I think you lose you lose something from your marriage it makes the marriage more challenging and in my case very sadly very very sadly um, means that it, it came to an end um, on reflection having done 10 years in the military 10 years in politics both of which are careers that um, well they're vocations rather than jobs and require you to be um, away an awful lot and you really as much as you as much as the military tries to make it work for families and as much as politics you know, you can try and make it work for families the reality is is that it's it's very challenging and so for me um, stepping away from from politics in order to just do the second half of my career in a way that um, allows me to have more time for my family and my relationships is um, is quite important to me well, let's speak now to former Special Forces officer and author Andy McNabb, who's on the line. Good afternoon, Andy. Hiya. Afternoon. I just wanted your thoughts first on those comments we heard at the beginning of that sequence of clips about the fear that fear of prosecution affecting soldiers on the battlefield and influencing decisions they have to take in in an instant. What's your thoughts on that? Um, well, I agree with James, but unfortunately, it's not what's going to happen in the future. This has been going on. Um, for decades with uh, special forces operators. I think that it, it's all about the context where the terms of reference and the, the, the way, if you like, what we would call the real world um, uh, looks into what you know, special forces are getting uh, into. I think that, that even from, you know, I could, in my own memory, in 1998, when the three uh, provisional IRA terrorists in Gibraltar were shot by an SAS team, um, we had years of, you know, investigations, documentaries, and Stra Strasbourg court deciding that the pirate team could and should have been arrested mm. um, in an air-conditioned office, you know, drinking mineral water years after the event. They just, you know, if you've got a team, which I agree with James, if you've got a team on the ground, you know, it's very difficult for us later on in our armchairs to mm. decide what they saw, what they heard, and what they felt, as well as the information that they've been given before, you know, we send them out onto the ground. It's very difficult. Right. Uh, even my own experiences, I've seen that people are, are, are just taking those seconds, um, putting themselves in, da in danger, and obviously their, their team, and if you like, the real world, the civilian world out there, um, because this is a very big problem. And it's only getting worse. Mm. And what of the rather surprising view, I guess, that he expressed that um, that Johnny Mercer should reveal the source of allegations that British troops were engaged in war crimes in Afghanistan? Do you? What's your take on that? No, I disagree with him. I think that that what Johnny should be doing is is exactly what he's doing at the moment. He's got that uh, a moral stance that is that that he's taken, which I agree with, and also um, Johnny still very much engaged with the military, you know, certainly the you know, military constituency as well. So there's a there's a problem of personal credibility as well if he steps forward and gives those names. What he I'll needs say to protect to the, his sources. Well, I did, what I say to the to the whistleblower itself, well, step up. If it's true, step up and then we'll find out. Mm. I mean, difficult to do that though, clearly, isn't it? Very much so, very much. But the, the whole situation is very, very difficult because the... Again, the if you like the the the, the arena which which SF operators are, are working in is just totally un, unknown or unfathomable to to the real world because we you know we see films and we're reading books and all that sort of stuff and we, we think that's how it is but it's not it literally as as James said it's you know less than a second to make those decisions and if we continue with these sort of allegations all the time and you know a lot of them seem to be lawyer backed as well you know we had one group of lawyers who were sort of took five years to um uh, reveal that their their clients were actually sheer uh, uh, militia and not sort of innocent civilians you know there, there seems to be a lot of money going on behind the scenes and it'd be interesting to see if there's 
lawyers involved in this process as well. Is it really possible that a serving minister could get sent to prison? Highly unlikely. It's it's a it's a lot of grandstanding. In fact, it, you know, it, it, you know, Johnny's credibility would certainly within in in our environment would be higher than ever. You right. Know, he'd have God status. He'd um, have a lot of visitors but, but, in jail. He would have a lot of visitors in, in jail, and I think that you know it's you know I know he's a very moral man. He's, he's standing by his principles, and, and good for him. Again, if the whistleblower really is concerned about it, time to step up.